Hey guys, what's up? Um, had a question come in about how to set up a controller uh, through RetroArch. And as I thought about that question, I thought, man, that's a really good question because like 90% of all this emulation stuff really centers around actually using a controller when you play the game. Uh, if you want to play it with a keyboard, yeah, I guess that's fine. But, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just doesn't seem like it's the same, you know, so uh, I thought I'd provide my tips and tricks, which is, you know, not nothing too great, nothing, I don't think I'm going to show you anything that uh, is just mind-blowing, but maybe it might help you understand a little bit about how the controller uh, setup works, and then maybe uh, a little bit of insight as to, like, what to look for if your controller is not working. Um, there's kind of good news and bad news to all of this. The good news is is that most emulators will recognize the controller just right away. It doesn't take a lot to get the configured. Uh, the setup, you know, once it recognizes it, is just basically going to the emulator and um, you know assigning the button configuration for up is down, up is up, down is down, left is right, you know, so forth. Um, if it's not seeing it, well, that's the crappy part is. There's so many controllers out there that um, it's usually not the emulator that's having the issue. It's probably your computer uh, that might not be recognizing the controller. I've gone through about three different controllers now. I had a really crappy one that was some off-brand Mad Cat's piece of junk. I used that for a little bit. Seemed like it worked off and on. It felt like you know it was made out of tissue paper. Uh, then I went out and bought a Logitech one that was very sturdy, had force feedback and everything. That felt a lot better. Um, but it was wired and it wasn't as fun just because you know I was limited to how far the cord would go. And then finally, I just went out and I bought a dongle for one of my Xbox 360 controllers. And I've been doing that for about a year and a half, two years now with that, and that's been flawless. And the reason why I think it's flawless is because uh, most of all my emulation stuff has been done on a PC, and Xbox 360 and Xbox One, of course, are Microsoft. So you're kind of using apples with apples there. So my recommendation, if you're having problems or whatever, um, and you're not using Xbox 360 controller or an Xbox One controller, take the time spend a couple of extra bucks and start using that. It just works pretty much right out of the box. Um, if you already have a lot of us, you know, that are gamers already have like an Xbox 360 controller lying around from our old X Xbox 360, all you have to do is buy the dongle. You've already got like 90% there. Just go on to Amazon. And my recommendation would be to buy an uh, actual Microsoft dongle if you want it wireless. Um, I've bought an off-brand one and it didn't work. I've seen other YouTube videos and they buy off-brand and it does work. I don't get it. I struggled with it. I threw it in the trash, went right back on Amazon, bought a Microsoft one for like 20 bucks. It worked right away. You know, I just installed the drivers from Microsoft's site and then unplugged the dongle in and it works. In fact, I've got two of them so I can have player one, player two. Um, so uh, just to kind of show you a little bit of like what you're going to want to look for in RetroArc, um, I'll just back up here a little bit. This You should be familiar with this somewhat uh, through RetroArch. Um, you have the cores area, and then like this is kind of like the settings uh, tab or whatever. If you go down to input, and then you go down to, and we're just going to deal with a user one. Uh, so you would do the same thing for user two, user three, if you have separate inputs, is you just hit X or enter or whatever. And you'll notice down here, uh, user one device index. That's your controller. So right now my Xbox 360 controller is off. I've got it, the dongle plugged in. I'm gonna push the button to turn it on, the little Xbox, and you'll see X input controller user one now. Um, that means that it's recognizing it and it's good to go. Um, I can then do the bind all and that will take me through this quick little, uh, it sucks, but it's a tutorial basically on um, assigning the button configuration. If you turn your controller on or you have it plugged in and it's not registering the device, that's probably your first uh, idea that your computer in general is not recognizing it. 
Um, that's what I would think would be going on. I don't have an extensive knowledge of every single controller and how Windows interfaces it with it and everything, but um, my idea would be it's not recognizing it. You probably need to go back, install some drivers, go to the controller's website, see what's going on and stuff like that. Um, uh, X or, uh, sorry, RetroArch is awesome because it is an emulator or, you know, so to speak, that will actually register when a controller is plugged in and update itself. If you're using Fusion or Dolphin or something like that, and I don't quote me on this, but a lot of those, uh, maybe not those specific, but some of them, when you plug the controller in, if the program is already running, it doesn't recognize the controller. You literally need to like close the program out, have the controller on, and then launch the program again, and then it will start recognizing it. So there's another troubleshooting tip as well. So like say you're using F Fusion, you start Fusion, you plug your controller in, and you go to configure it, and all of a sudden, it's not working. You know, it doesn't recognize it or whatever. Um, that will kind of tell you right there, maybe that's the issue. Uh, just close the program out, make sure everything's closed out, reopen it again, and go to the config. If it's still not working, if it still doesn't see it, here is what I would kind of do. And this is a little bit more of a Windows than it is emulator. Is you go to your control panel. And you go to devices and printers, and you'll see all you can see all the stuff that you have plugged in right now. And you'll notice that it actually recognizes two of the things that I've plugged in, quote unquote, which is my Xbox 360 wireless receiver, and then it also recognizes the controller. And that's the receiver is just a bridge from the controller to the PC, is all it is, you know. And so if these weren't showing up, that would be my first in indication that something's something's wrong. This should recognize just about anything, even if it's extremely generic. If you have some ridiculous Pelican, Mad Cat's old controller, USB controller, you plug it in, and it kind of just says like unknown device or whatever. That could be uh, indication that sure, it's not recognizing it. Something's going on. If you go in here and you see, yes, I have an Xbox 360 controller or I have a Logitech or whatever, it should <laughs> it should be recognized in here. And I apologize if I don't have any more troubleshooting ships of t t uh, tips of, you know, I see it in here, but it's not popping up in here. Probably reinstall, reinstall RetroArch, you know, something like that, you know. Um, if you're looking at other um, emulation you know, devices in here. I'm just going to just throw in stuff on the screen here to kind of show you. So, for example, Fusion is uh, one of the uh, Sega emulators I like to use. And so I'll bring that over, and we saw in RetroArch that it recognizes X input controller. A lot of emulators will recognize it as that, but not every single one. Um, if you go into here and you get set config controllers, you'll actually see that this sees it as Xbox 360 wireless, and it's trying to say it all, but, you know, it's it's being cut off, you know, and everything. And you'll see keyboard and mouse here, too. If you were to plug in another controller, start this up, say I had the 360 and a Logitech controller, it should show both of them, and you should be able to designate which ones are working. If it's not showing up in here, I would definitely kind of start at a driver's input selection type, so... Uh, just as another example, um, we can go to the um, DS emulator, bring it over here, go to config, uh, controller config, and this one doesn't really show you, you know, anything. It doesn't say what you have selected. But since this uh, computer is already registering that my controller is plugged in and it is an input device, if I were to click on the thing, I can push up. And it moves to the next one. I go left, down. This is showing that it's registering, you know, that everything is uh, working correctly and that it's registering the inputs when I push something on the controller. Um, you'll see in other ones that says Joypad or Joyopad. I think that's what this kind of stands for, the J-O, or it looks like maybe a zero, but I think it's an O. Uh, I think that's kind of how a lot of different um, systems will recognize it as a, a Joy-O-Pad or a Joy-Zero-Pad. Um, I probably could have done some research and seen what that really stands for, but honestly, I don't care because <laughs> it works, you know, and everything. So, uh, cancel that. That kind of shows you just a little bit there. I don't know if I have any other systems in here, 
that should give you any more information other than just you know trying to give you an idea of what happens when you do this um, here's the dolphin here's the controller we'll set up the GameCube one and air X input same thing is exactly what RetroArch sees you know type of deal so and I push the stick around it moves just as it should and you're seeing that the input registers and that's your main idea that's what you really want to look for and everything so uh, <clears throat> really honestly uh, if um, you don't have the 360 controller and I know some of us uh, don't have as much money <laughs> and you know this is why we do the emulation stuff is because it's free you know you can just chop down a couple of games play them you don't have to spend any money uh, I honestly would really highly recommend investing in the 360 controller if you don't have one you can find one on amazon for pretty cheap you know uh it's not it's an older system technology now and so people are kind of getting rid of them you can even go on ebay you know i'm sure get a 360 controller for 10 bucks maybe i don't quote me on that one either so um hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight as to how this works and i always recommend using a controller ah, the keyboard sucks there's no point in ever getting that in fact if i was going to play an airplane game you know like a flight simulator or something i probably want to go out and buy a joystick you know or something get the throttle and all that uh but um i don't think i'm going to go that far uh try this if uh, it's not working with retroarch maybe even download one of these standalone emulators see if you can get to work with that if not Unfortunately, it's probably your controller, and I say that because, and I'll say this right now, I've had very little issues with controller setup. Um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It shouldn't be too much of a problem um, doing that. So, all right, hope this helps. Uh, have a great day, guys.